This videotape was produced to assist the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission in its review and evaluation of the application for relicense of Seattle City Light's Skagit Hydroelectric Project number 553-005. Visual quality analyses were conducted as part of a response to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's 1988 additional information request. The videotape is designed to provide clear images of the project facilities, to illustrate how the facilities are seen by the public, and to place the facilities in their regional and immediate context. Three technical non-narrated videotape appendices are provided at the end of the videotape. The appendices present all key viewing areas, recreation facilities, and gorge bypass flow releases. The Skagit Hydroelectric Project area boundary encompasses 19,266 acres, about two and a half miles across at its narrowest point at the town of New Halem, and five miles at its widest point near Ruby Mountain. Set in a steep valley carved out by the Skagit River, the Skagit Hydroelectric Project is located within the 128,261 acres of the Ross Lake National Recreation Area. The Ross Lake National Recreation Area appears as a mosaic of dense coniferous forests, exposed rock faces, and avalanche fields, as it follows the Skagit River Gorge 50 miles from the Canadian border to the town of Marblemont. Seven major tributaries feed the Skagit within the National Recreation Area. Ross Lake National Recreation Area is part of the 680,000 acre North Cascades National Park Complex. Most of the North Cascades National Park is designated as wilderness. The park complex is bordered by the Okanagan National Forest on the east and the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest on the west. The Okanagan National Forest includes the Pesaten Wilderness to the east of Ross Lake. The Ross Lake National Recreation Area and North Cascades National Park have extraordinary mountain terrain containing the densest concentration of glaciers in the conterminous United States. Average elevation of the glaciered peaks is 2,800 meters. The views are less spectacular in the lower elevation front country where valley walls frequently block views to the peaks. The mountainous wilderness of the North Cascades is in strong visual contrast with the adjacent agricultural valleys. Visitors from the populous Puget Sound Basin to the west pass through the pastoral Skagit Valley composed of large old farms and distant mountain views. The transition from an agricultural landscape to mountain wilderness begins west of New Halem. From the east, visitors arrive at the project boundary after crossing high mountain passes within the Okanagan National Forest. From Ross Lake to New Halem, the route is downhill and continues out to the lower pastoral valley. The southern end of the Skagit project area at New Halem is approximately a three-hour drive northeast of Seattle, Washington. State Route 20, known as the North Cascades Highway, is the only highway to the project area. It is the northernmost east-west route in Washington state and is very popular with tourists in the summer and fall. SR-20 is closed in winter due to heavy snow and severe avalanches. Skagit hydroelectric project facilities include three dams, powerhouses, and reservoirs. The largest and most recently constructed is Ross Dam. The construction of Ross Dam, which is 540 feet high, was completed in 1949. The powerhouse is immediately downstream of the dam. The reservoir is approximately 24 miles long and extends beyond the FERC licensed project area into Canada for about one mile. The lake averages just under one mile in width. Immediately below Ross Dam is the Diablo Lake and Dam. Built in the 1920s, the dam is 389 feet high. The lake is approximately four and a half miles long and average width varies from one half mile to less than one eighth mile. The Diablo powerhouse is located within the Diablo townsite. 
Below Diablo Dam is Gorge Lake and Dam. The dam is 300 feet high. Gorge Lake is less than four miles long and averages an eighth of a mile in width. The original Gorge Dam was built early in the century. Construction of the existing Gorge Dam was completed in 1961. Diablo Dam and Diablo and Gorge Powerhouses are on the National Register of Historic Places. Below Gorge Dam is the Gorge Bypass reach of the Skagit River. The flow in this river reach is diverted through a tunnel to the Gorge Powerhouse at the historic company town New Halem, approximately two and a half miles below Gorge Dam. These hydroelectric dam facilities span approximately 35 miles of the 162 mile long Skagit River, Washington State's third largest river. Below the Gorge Powerhouse, the Skagit River is free flowing. Outside the National Recreation Area, west of Bacon Creek, the river is administered as a national recreational river by the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. Seattle City Light maintains two company towns, New Halem on the north bank of the Skagit River and Diablo, six miles upriver on Gorge Lake. 39 existing buildings have been studied by the National Park Service for their eligibility for the National Register of Historic Places. Historic district nominations are being prepared for Seattle City Light for both communities. New Halem encompasses approximately 84 acres and consists of employee housing, administrative offices, a general store, service yard, maintenance structures, switchyard, landscaped park spaces, and nature trails. A visitor contact station is operated by City Light with cooperation from the National Park Service. Diablo encompasses approximately 46 acres and is composed of employee housing, the Diablo powerhouse, incline lift, man lift and switchyard, dining hall, recreation facilities, and facilities for the popular Skagit tours that Seattle City Light has conducted for over 50 years. Below New Halem, the Skagit transmission lines parallel SR-20 and the Skagit River on a westwardly route. East of Rockport, the transmission lines turn south, cross the Skagit River, and parallel the Sauk River and State Route 530 to Darrington. The Sauk River is managed as a national scenic river by the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. For visual quality analysis, relevant study methods were selected and adapted from the visual management systems currently used by the Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, and Washington State Department of Transportation. The Forest Service administers part of the study area, and the Washington Department of Transportation manages the North Cascades Highway, SR-20, as a state scenic highway. The Bureau of Land Management's contrast rating system is relevant for the evaluation of built facilities, a subject that the Forest Service's system does not adequately address. The visual quality analysis began with mapping the view sheds along SR-20 from the reservoirs and from the wild and scenic rivers. Visibility of Seattle City Light facilities within the project area was mapped. The affected environment was further defined by landscape zones and unit designations, which were determined by several factors, including landscape character and administrative agency management policies. Key viewpoints were identified, mapped, and photographed. Each of these viewpoints are documented in the non-narrated section of this videotape. Next, visual quality ratings were calculated for the landscapes as seen from the key viewpoints. Quality was based on vividness, intactness, and memorability. The methodology is described in detail in Section 2 on Land Management and Aesthetics of Seattle City Light's Supplemental Environmental Information Report to FERC of October 31, 1989. To identify visual quality problems, Seattle City Light facilities were evaluated using a contrast rating system. The significance of these visual contrasts 
was determined by evaluating viewer sensitivity and expectations. A summary of the visual impact findings follows. The study methods were reviewed and modified by Seattle City Light and the interested interveners, Forest Service, National Park Service, North Cascades Conservation Council, and Washington Department of Ecology in advance of their implementation. Frequent meetings have been held with the interveners throughout the process. Each step has been presented to the interveners for their review and their comments and recommendations have been incorporated into the study plan. The study area and scope were expanded in response to concerns by the interveners to include additional backcountry and wild and scenic river key viewpoints. Feedback was also solicited from the interveners on visual management objectives and viewer sensitivity and expectations. The visual quality analysis was conducted from the travel corridors and viewpoints frequented by the visiting public within the project area. Recreation activities, Seattle City Light facility visibility and time seen along these routes were determined. Visitor information was obtained from the Recreation Study, Section 1 of the Supplemental Environmental Information Report. The most popular recreational activities within the project area include pleasure driving, boating, fishing, hiking, and camping. The videotape will now take you along these key viewing routes to give you a sense of what the public sees, what recreational activities they are participating in, and the impact of the Seattle City Light project facilities. The predominant road corridors are SR-20, the North Cascade Scenic Highway, and SR-530 along the Sauk River. The boating corridors are across the three reservoirs and down the Sauk and Skagit Rivers. Both powerboats and canoes are used on the reservoirs. Ross Lake receives the majority of boat usage, although Diablo Lake is seen by thousands annually due to the popular Seattle City Light tour boat. Gorge Lake receives the least boating use, probably due to its small size, primitive public launch, and rapids at the upstream end of the reservoir. Boating on the wild and scenic river segments is predominantly rafting, although kayaking is also popular, and below the mouth of the Salk River, power boats are frequently used by anglers. The hiking and equestrian trails within or adjacent to the project area have extremely limited views of project facilities due to elevation separation, topography, and vegetation. The exception is the East Bank Trail along Ross Lake, which has frequent foreground views of the lake. Bank fishing is also popular on the lakes and rivers, but access is limited due to topography. The popular travel corridors will be displayed within the context of landscape zone and unit divisions. The first landscape zone is the Upper Ross Lake Zone. The visual quality analysis of this zone was conducted as part of the Ross Lake Early Season Studies, published in a separate report submitted to the FERC by Seattle City Light on October 31, 1989. The second landscape zone is the Skagit Project Facility Zone. This zone includes the three dams, powerhouses, and lakes, and the two town sites. Most visitors travel through this zone from west to east along SR-20. Traveling from New Halem east, visitors pass by the Gorge Bypass Reach of the Skagit River, likely stop at the Gorge Falls Overlook, and continue along Gorge Lake, crossing the lake before the town of Diablo. There are no developed overlooks along the bypass section, and Gorge Lake and visibility is limited. Gorge Dam may be seen only from an undeveloped overlook. Most travelers along SR-20 do not turn into the Diablo town site. Those that do are likely going on the Seattle City Light tour that begins at Diablo. A small campground and the Diablo Lake Resort also attract some visitors off the main road. At the campground is a public boat launch. Gorge Lake is accessible upstream to a view of Diablo Dam and downstream past SR-20 to Gorge Dam. SR-20 is located on the south side of Diablo Lake, but views of the lake and town site are restricted to one developed overlook, a couple of informal gravel pull-offs, and the crossing of Thunder Arm near the Colonial Creek Campground and Boat Launch. A public access road crosses the top of the historic Diablo Dam, parallels the west side of Diablo Lake, and services Diablo Lake Resort 
and the National Park Service and Seattle City Light Boathouses. The Seattle City Light Boat Tour begins at a boathouse on Diablo Lake. It crosses the main body of the lake and travels up the narrow rock canyon below Ross Dam. Views from SR-20 to Ross Dam and Lake are of very limited duration due to the curvy road, rough terrain, and vegetation. Many visitors stop at the Ross Lake Overlook. Relatively few people hike down the steep, mile-long trail to Ross Dam. Day hikers, backpackers, and Ross Lake Resort users gain access to the Ross Lake facilities from this trail or from the Seattle City Light Boat Shuttle Service up Diablo Lake to Ross Dam. Ross Lake Resort rents boats and Seattle City Light will shuttle small boats via their tugboat shuttle. The only developed boat launches are on the north end of Ross Lake at Hosamine, accessible only through Canada. Hosamine is a four-hour drive from New Halem. The third landscape zone is the Ross Lake National Recreation Area West Entry Zone. The predominant viewer corridors are along SR-20 and the Skagit River. Two riverside campgrounds are in this zone. Most rafters put in at the Goodell Creek Campground. The only visible Seattle City Light facilities in this zone are the transmission towers and conductors, which are highly visible from SR-20 and the Skagit River. The fourth landscape zone is the Skagit Recreational River Zone. SR-20 passes through the town of Marblemont and the adjoining rural landscape. The transmission lines are of limited visibility from SR-20 and the river in most locations. The fifth landscape zone is the Salk Scenic River Zone. The only Seattle City Light facilities in this zone are the transmission lines. They are occasionally visible from SR 530, but views are predominantly screened by vegetation. The transmission lines are visible from the river at the crossing and along a cut bank. The visual quality analysis concluded that the most adverse visual impacts result from the transmission lines. The dams, powerhouses, reservoirs, and town sites have low to moderate visual impacts. Almost all visual impacts from project facilities occur in the front country along SR-20. Visual impacts to the back country and wilderness are minimal due to the extremely restricted visibility of project facilities resulting from topography, vegetation, and climatic conditions. The visual impacts of the Skagit project dams are moderate to low because they are located in steep valley notches which limit their exposure to viewers other than persons who visit the dams with the purpose and expectation of seeing them. The access routes to the dams are generally inconspicuous, helping to reduce the overall visual impacts of the dam installations. Gorge and Diablo dams were built using rail access. The incline lift at Diablo precluded the need to build switchbacks to reach the top of the dam, which could have been highly visible. Barges provided construction access to Ross Dam, again minimizing the scarring associated with road access. The viewer exposure to the transmission lines is high in many of the landscape units because the lines closely parallel the river and road, which are both areas of high visitor activity. Viewer sensitivity is also high along the river, particularly from Goodell Creek to Rockport and along the Salk River because of whitewater rafting eagle watching, and fishing. The overall visual impacts of the transmission lines are high in a number of the landscape units, including Lower Diablo Lake, Gorge Lake, Goodell Creek to Bacon Creek on the Skagit River, and Seattle River to Flume Creek on the Salk River. Town sites and miscellaneous buildings associated with the Skagit project impose low to moderate visual impacts. The neatly maintained rows of houses and extensive lawn areas contrast sharply with the surrounding natural environment. But the quality of design and maintenance cause this contrast to increase the visual quality of the historic town sites. The land use and aesthetics report further documents the visual impacts. From the list of visual impacts, preliminary mitigation strategies and opportunities have been identified. A visual mitigation plan is being developed by Seattle City Light in consort with the interveners.